So you enjoy Wingspan and you want more of a challenge, you're ready to play the Oceania expansion, introducing some pretty cool Australian and the whole Oceania area birds. Worry not, I'm going to teach you how to play multiplayer with your family and your friends. I'm going to teach you how to play solo. I'm going to teach you how to play the Horde variant. I'm going to teach you how to play the Automorazzi variant if you want to play against the Automa solo opponent with friends. If you only want one of those, just skip to the chapter, but honestly, it's going to be pretty quick. Hang out with me, enjoy it. Howdy, and welcome back. I'm Mike, your board gaming every dude, and this is Board Games for One. As always, before we get started, let's get an overview of how the game works. Oceania is the second expansion to Wingspan. It features colorful and just super fun, adorable birds of Oceania. The Oceania bird cards are designed to be shuffled into the bird cards from the base game. You can do this with other expansions too, just beware, crazy things can happen if you mix a whole bunch of expansions together. This expansion includes new player mats and a new food type, Nectar, that allows players to explore some different strategies in a different environment. It also adds some new bonus cards, some end around goals, and we now have these, I call them gold or yellow egg miniatures. Setup's going to be exactly the same as the base game with these very few changes. First, take all of your Oceania eggs and mix them up with the base game eggs. It doesn't really make a difference, it's just pretty. Next, replace the base game dice with the Oceania dice. The Oceania dice have the nectar. Take the base game bonus tiles and mix in the Oceania bonus tiles. If you ever want to remove these, you can find them by the OE Oceania expansion in the bottom right corner. Mix them together. Replace the base game scoring card with the Oceania scoring card. Flip it this way so you can see it. There we go. Use the end of round reference that comes with the Oceania expansion as it tells you what to do with the new rules, especially Nectar. Take all of the food from the base game and mix it with the Nectar from the Oceania expansion. Take the base game bonus cards and shuffle them together with the new bonus cards from the Oceania expansion. If you ever want to remove them out, just look for the OE in the bottom right corner. Take all your birds from your base game and mix in all of the birds from the Oceania expansion. You'll be able to know it's an Oceania expansion card because of the OE in the bottom right. Instead of using the base game habitat board, you are going to use the Oceania expansion habitat board as it has a few new abilities on it. You can also use this to play the base game and you simply ignore the nectar related icons. Just like in the base game, when you set up every player starts with one of each food, they also start with one nectar. Just as a reminder, make sure that you keep your cubes in the column at the end of the round all the way to the end of scoring. If you follow the end of round reference, you won't have to worry about it. If you need a refresher on how to play the base game, I'm putting the link in the description below for my how to play video for multiplayer and solo. Check it out, come right back. Wingspan introduces nectar as a new and special type of food. Something unique about nectar is at the end of every round, not every turn, every round, you must discard all unused nectar. This is different from food, which you retain after the round is over. Oceania also introduces a new bird power, the yellow bird power. These are for game end scoring, so you do not get to use this ability until scoring at the end of game. Do not confuse these with pink powers, which are used once between every turn. Nectar is a new form of food that can be used as a wild. So if you are paying a food cost to place a bird, for example, if I wanted to place Montague's Harrier in the field, I could pay with one rodent, and one nectar to satisfy that food cost. When spent, the nectar used to fulfill this food requirement gets spent in the same row as the bird that was placed by paying that food cost. The rat, of course, would get discarded. At the end of the round, any leftover nectar that's discarded gets returned to the supply. It does not get placed on the spent nectar space. You can also use nectar to pay for any food cost for abilities on the board. So where it says wild, a nectar would satisfy that cost. However, nectar is not wild when it comes to bird powers. For example, 
If you have a bird power that refers to a specific type of food, you must use that. This says discard one slug. I must discard one slug. If you do, gain one nectar from the supply. I cannot use nectar to substitute that. If you have a bird power that refers to wild, this one says discard up to six wild food. Well, then I can do that. I can go one, two, three, four, five, and I can use one of my nectar as a wild. You'll see that this is a new icon to this expansion. It means you may use any food, so it could be nectar, could be a rat, it could be anything in order to reset the bird feeder tray. There is another new icon where you could use any food, so it could be a nectar, it could be a wheat, or anything else in order to reset the tray of birds on display. If there is ever a nectar icon either on the board or on a bird card as a food cost, you must use nectar in order to satisfy that food cost. In this case on the board, I could either discard an egg or discard a nectar in order to gain this bird card. However, the game rule that you can discard two of any type of food in order to convert to one of another type still applies to nectar. So in this case, I could use a slug, I could use a wild of any type, and I could then also spend these two to meet the nectar requirement. There are a couple birds in the base game. I think it's the common raven, the chihuahua raven, which the nectar might seem to overpower them. If that really bothers you, take them out of the game. There's so many bird cards, the likelihood of getting them is so small, but if you're really strict about it, just take them out. As a refresher, you place your nectar in the spent space. When you use nectar to pay for any food cost, you place it there. Or if you use it to activate a board power, you would place it in the row where you spent it. Also, if there is a bird power that requires you to use either a wild or it requires a nectar, then the spent nectar goes into the spent nectar row. These remain here till the end of the game for end game scoring. If you use two other types of food to pay for a nectar cost, the nectar never enters your supply. It does not get placed in the spent nectar. With regard to the trading two wilds for one wild food, this does not apply to nectar. Nectar is already wild, so you could not discard two nectar in order to get something else. It's already wild. It wouldn't make sense. Don't do it. At the end of the game, you will look, if you're playing multiplayer, you will look at everybody's spent nectar. And whoever has the majority for that row is the one that wins first place. So if I had two nectar and my opponent had one, then I would get five points. Second place, they would get two points. If they didn't have any nectar at all, they don't get to participate. I get five points, they get nothing. You would do that for each row. If there's a tie, so we both had two nectar in this row, then we would split it and then round down. So five split rounded down would be two points for each of us. If two or more players are tied, what you do is you add the points together. So we would be like, all right, first place five, second place two, so that's seven points. And it was two players, so we would divide that in half and round down. So two players tied for first place, each one would get three points. If it was in second place, they would each get one point. At the end of the game, if you have birds with yellow powers, you get to score those game end powers. If you have more than one in your habitat, you can score them in any order you like to maximize your points. Oceania introduces cute, adorable, flightless birds. These birds don't have wingspans. This can cause trouble when certain bird abilities refer to a wingspan. You'll notice that there is an asterisk instead. What that means is these are wild as far as wingspan is concerned. So you can make that wingspan whatever you want or need it to be in order to maximize your points. Also, flightless birds satisfy the condition for predator in every predator ability that's activated. Just as a reminder, the predator ability is the skull and bones. There are some bird powers that refer to adjacency. So if it is referring to birds that are adjacent in a column, if it was Gold's Finch, then that would mean it would be adjacent to these two birds, the mistletoe bird and the gray butcher bird. Butcher bird. Butcher bird. That was fun. 
If it was referring to the little penguin and adjacency in all directions, then the little penguin is adjacent to the crested penguin and it's adjacent to the gray butcher bird. There are new specific bonus cards, new words for bonus cards. Honestly, you never need to look at this appendix, just read the cards, but if you really have questions, you can check it out here. You've got every bird power broken down, egg laying powers, card drawing powers, hunting and fishing powers, locking powers, all the powers, all the powers. You don't need to look at that, but you can if you're crazy. A brief look at the new end of round goals. If you have this one where you have a certain food symbol shown, it could be a slug, in this case it's a rat and a fish, in food cost of your birds, then what you would do is you would count how many rats and fish are in the food cost of your birds. In this case, what do I have? I have one, two, I have, oh, that's it. Oh, three, I have three. So I would get three in order to see if I had the majority. Everybody else playing would do the same. If you get the no goal, then nobody scores anything. You do not place a cube in a place like you normally would. Your cube goes back to your supply and you now have an extra cube, an extra turn for the future rounds. And finally, the beak. It'll say beak pointing left or beak pointing right. You look at your birds, don't look at their head, look at the direction of their beak. If I had beak pointing to the right, I would be like, okay, one and two. I have two birds with a beak pointing to the right. I would compare that to the majorities of other players. Or if you're playing on the blue side, just how many did you get? In this case, I would have two. So I'd put my little marker on two. If you're not sure if it's a beak pointing left or right, either agree as a group or just leave it out or just make a decision. But if you're crazy pants and you really want to know, the rule book tells you which birds are not pointing left or right in each the in each game, in the Oceania, European, and base game. That's it, you know how to play multiplayer. Let's go into solo. Set up the solo game as normal with a few exceptions. You're going to take the five solo cards here and you can remove the Automorazzi and the Atomas Horde as those are variants we're gonna cover in a moment. Take the Oceania Raltima card and shuffle it into your base game Automa deck. For more of a challenge, you can use the Automa Bond Society from the base game as well. Also, at the start of the game, place this in the Automa player's area. And it says at the start of the game, place three, four, or five nectar in each box. That depends on the challenge level. If you chose Eaglet, the easy mode, you would place three nectar on each one of these spaces. If you chose normal, you would put four on each space. We'll say that we chose Eaglet. So we're going to put three on each space to start the game. Regarding game end scoring for the Automa, the Automa regards game end scoring the yellow power cards as any other card. They do not apply this. It's simply if it's a face up card, it's worth that many points. If it's a face down, it's worth as many points as the challenge level you picked. I think easy mode is three, regular is four, hard mode is five, something like that. At times, just like in the base game, sometimes you will be asked to remove a food dice from the food tray for the Automabon Society or something like that. The Atoma, there you go. So if it says cherry, that means cherry and nectar. If it says wheat, that means wheat and nectar gets removed. And finally, the last bit for the Automa player, you have your end of round adjust spent nectar. So at the end of every round on the Automa's counting point, you are going to do this two times. It tells you right on the card, you're gonna draw a card and you're gonna place it underneath so that the cubes, if any, are lined up with these columns. Then for every cube shown or every removed cube shown, you're gonna take an action. So if it's round one, you are going to add a cube in the forest habitat by doing that. Boom, then we do this again. Let's say it's still round one. So round one, we place another nectar there. But let's say actually, that it was round two when we did this. In that case, if it's round two, we would remove one nectar from the field habitat. If there is no cube, say it was round three, nothing happens. Ignore any other icons other than cube or remove cube. For end of round scoring, you're going to use the end of round goal scoring cards if you have any of the Oceania 
expansion tiles, the ones with the OE in the bottom right. You might have a mix of the Oceania and your base game tiles. You might not have any of these, but if you do, use this as your reference. So, for example, if I have Beak pointing to the right for the Atoma, I will see if it is round one, make sure you're on the correct round, then that means that this starts with zero. Well, I have three cubes to add to that, so that would mean that they have three bird cards with beaks pointing to the right. So I would need four bird cards in my habitat with the beak pointing to the right in order to win first place. Let's say that it was round two and I had three again and I've got this food cost icon. I would go right here and I would have to make sure I flip this to round two. In round two, cherries plus wheat in food cost of your birds, so they would start out with two. I would add these, that would make a total of five. So I would have to have five more of these or more to tie or beat them. Let's say that it was round three just as a final example to be thorough. And if it's round three, we're gonna go to the round three card. There we go. Number of cubes on play a bird. They would be starting with one and we would add the cubes to it. So they'd have a total of four. We would have to beat that. All right, now let's learn how to play Atoma's Horde. This mode is to simulate a little more interaction like you would have in a person-to-person -person game, but for the solo player. When you have bird powers that tell you to give something to your opponent, like the three I have right here, here's how you do it. So for example, this one says, tuck one bird card from your hand behind this bird. Okay, whatever, let's say we did it. Boom, that was from my hand, it's under the bird. If you do, all players gain one nectar from the supply. Well, what do I give to the Atoma player since they don't collect food? That's where the horde thing comes in. So anytime it says to give nectar, you take two food of any type, it doesn't matter what type, from the supply and you give them to the Atoma player. These are called horde tokens. So take those two, give them to them. If it were to say to give them one food from the supply, then you would grab a horde token, again, the food type doesn't matter, just one, and put it into the Atoma player's play area. If it tells you to give them a bird card, you would instead give them one horde token and put it in the Atoma player's play area. If it tells you to give them an egg from the supply, you would instead give them three horde tokens and put it in their Atoma player's play area. So again, just to refresh it, if it tells to give food, they get one horde token. If it tells to give a bird card, they get one horde token. If it tells to give one dice from the bird feeder, they get one horde token. If it tells to give them one nectar, they get two food tokens. If it tells you to give them one egg, you give them three horde tokens. At the end of the game, their horde tokens are worth eggs. They get one egg for each of three, four, or five, depending on your difficulty. If you chose easy, eaglet, you get one egg to give to the Atoma player for every three food tokens. If we were playing in eagle mode, then every four tokens would be worth one egg. Excuse my callous hands, oh my goodness. Hard mode, of course, five horde tokens would be transferred to one egg. Then those eggs collected are used for points, just like in the base game. All right, and for the final play mode in Oceania Expansion, it's the Automorazzi. This is for two to four players to play against the Automa. And just as a side note, the Automorazzi variant can be played with the Horde variant. There are no changes to set up to play Automorazzi. You set up just like the base game, and you set up your solo player just like you would if you were playing solo. The player turn order, it goes like normal in the game where you pass the first player token. The Automorazzi always goes last. There are certain bird powers that refer to the player's position. It'll say player to your left or player to your right. So what you have to do when you sit down at a table with your friends is determine where are the Automorazzi sitting and just keep them consistently in that place to the left or to the right of any player. Pink powers are played exactly the same, but just remember that you only get to activate a pink power once per turn. So if the Automorazzi then tells you to activate a pink power, you don't get to do it because you already did it. Unless you didn't already do it, then you get to do it. Since you're playing cooperatively, a cool thing about the Automorazzi mode is you can give your bird cards 
to other players. But here's the thing. If you give a bird card to another player, you have to discard either one food or one egg or one of the cards from your hand to give it to them. You can give away as many bird cards as you want to any players as long as you can pay the price. If you use, where'd you go? If you use nectar, it goes back to the supply. It does not go to spent nectar. You also can work cooperatively by taking eggs from each other, but everybody has to agree. So if I wanted to take two eggs from another, well, if I wanted to take one egg, you always have to take two eggs. When you do the take egg action, you can do this as many times as you want, but here's the deal. You get to keep one of them and place it on one of your birds, obeying the egg laying rules, making sure the bird can hold it. Then you have to give one egg to the Atoma. Also, you can give food to any players at any point during your turn to as many players as you want with as much food as you want. But here's the deal. For each food that you give to another player, you have to give two horde tokens. Where'd you go? Two horde tokens to the Atoma. If you give another player a nectar, then you have to give one, two, three horde tokens to the Atoma. Horde tokens, of course, are taken from the supply as normal. At the end of the round, if all players, so this is cooperative, everybody must succeed. If all players tie or exceed the Atoma on the end of round goal, then everybody gets one egg that they can place on a bird where there's still a place to lay an egg. Then at the end of the game, when you do your final scoring, you are going to score just as normal using the score sheet, and then you are going to average all the players' score against the Atoma. If you beat them, congratulations, you won. Otherwise, sorry guys, y'all lost. If you want to apply a little more pressure, then you would compare the lowest score only to the Atoma's score. And if you beat that, then y'all won. That's a good way if you want to make sure that everybody is helping each other out. It's your choice. And that's it, y'all. Thank you so much for staying. If this was helpful, if you enjoy any of these modes, please be sure to subscribe, not just for future how to play videos, but we also have a lot of fun discussions, top 10 lists, challenges, all kinds of stuff. Be sure to subscribe. Give me a like so more people can find this and we can keep growing this channel, solo gaming and family gaming and all the gaming. I appreciate it so much. I will knock my box over. I will see you all next time. I love you.